Okay, so we are starting something really big and new, the work energy principle. This is pretty tough. There's a lot of stuff here, so um, I think it's really hard to give a basic idea um, because it's so powerful and so big. But of course, has anything like that ever stopped me before? No, it has never stopped me before. So let's do it. The blank sheet of paper and a piece of Lego. Yes. Okay, so this is some situation and it's uh, got a blue piece on there. And this is a person right here. And this is, let's call this momentum principle. Right there. So if I'm standing over here, I'm looking at this situation that could be a falling box or whatever. And I see the blue Lego pieces close to me and the yellow is further away. Okay, so I'm looking at it from this viewpoint. Now what if I come over here? And now I call this work energy. Now I'm looking at the exact same Lego. It's not different, but it looks different, right? Because I'm looking at it from this side, the blue piece is further away. So in a way, the momentum principle, and this you could call this if you want to call it F net equals MA, this is the same thing. This is the way we've been describing situations so far. We've been looking at it from this point of view. So here's a little guy over here saying, oh, it looks like this, the blue's close by. We've been describing it that way. But using work energy is a different viewpoint. It's a different viewpoint to describe the exact same things. So I could take something like this, A falling ball and so I can look at it from over here using the momentum principle or I could look at and I'm not actually looking at it from different sides this is just a, a metaphor for thinking about physics right physics is about a viewpoint and the work energy viewpoint will look different but it's the same thing it's a different way to model motion okay there I've said that so let's briefly think about the falling ball. So it starts with V1 equals zero. It ends up down here, V2 equals some value, and it falls a height H. So before we would use the, if I use the momentum principle, I could say this, F net equals delta P over delta T. And, and so I could write this as delta P equals F net delta T. Like that, that's momentum principle. So the key thing here is I have force, I have time, and I have change momentum. The work, in, and that is the momentum principle. The work energy principle says this. work, which you don't know what that is, is equal to the change in energy, which you don't know what that is, okay? So let me give a definition of work that I will change later. So work can be defined as this. Work is a force times a displacement, really that should be a magnitude also, times cosine the angle between the force and displacement. This is actually a dot product, but I, I wrote it like this because it looks a little bit better. And in this case, uh, energy, um, well, let's leave it as energy. So I can say change in energy is F delta R cosine theta. So this is really the work energy principle, and this is momentum principle. So you see here, two big differences. Number one, I have a vector force, here I have a scalar force, here I have a change in time, here I have no time, okay? So those are the two big differences. No vector, no time. So this deals with changes in position, this deals with changes in time. There's gonna be a lot of cases, like this falling ball, that can be done either way. Uh, 
And there are some cases where this is easier and there's some cases where this is easier. There's some cases where you would be crazy to try to use the momentum principle to solve it. Okay, so in a lot of cases, the work energy is better, but it also doesn't give as much information. Okay, let's do this. I need to define one more thing and then I'm gonna do this problem. So here we have momentum is mass times velocity. What about energy? Now you may hear people say, oh, energy blah, energy blah, blah, blah. But really at the, at the very fundamental level, at this level, I think we can just say there's one type of energy uh, and that's kinetic energy which is one half m v squared. But you'll notice mass, velocity, mass, velocity. They both depend on mass and velocity, but not the same way, because this is velocity squared. Okay, so I'm gonna do this with the momentum principle. I'm gonna get an expression. I'm gonna do it with work energy principle, and then I'll stop, because I don't want my video to be too long. I have a feeling that someone's gonna interrupt me before that anyway. Okay, so go back to the ball. I'm gonna make it simple. V1 equals zero meters per second falls from a height h and gets down here. So using momentum principle, I'm gonna say I have a gravitational force on that. So Fy is equal to negative mg. I've already broke this into a scalar uh, problem, one dimensional scalar problem, because I know it's only one dimensional. And that's gonna be delta P y over delta t. So I get negative mg equals, and I wanna find out uh, let's say how fast is going down here. V2 equals, that's what I'm trying to find. So this is gonna be uh, M V2 minus V1 over delta T. And I know that V1 is zero, so I get negative MG equals M V2 over delta T. So I could solve this for V2. V2 is gonna be equal to negative MG delta T. But I don't know time. Okay, so, but I actually know a trick up here. Look, if this is going from zero to V2, I can say the average velocity, and this is again in the Y direction, is V1 plus V2 over two, but V1 is zero. So it's gonna be V2 over two. And this is gonna be equal to delta Y over delta T. That's the definition of average velocity. There's two definitions. So from this, I can solve for delta T. Delta T equals, 2 delta y over v2. And so what's delta y? Let's call, it doesn't really matter, but I'll call this my y equals zero. So the initial y is h, the final y is zero. So this delta y is gonna be negative two h over v2. Yeah, I was just thinking, wow, I have a negative time, but I don't because v2 has to be negative, okay. So now I'm gonna put this in up there. Wait, I'm gonna put it in up here. Right there. So I get V2 equals negative mg delta T, which is gonna be negative two H over V2. And then I'm gonna multiply both sides by V2. V2 equals mg two H squared. V2 equals the square root of two. Oh wait, the mass canceled. Mass canceled. Mass canceled. My fault. Mine. That's bad. Me. Bad. But I fixed it, so it's not bad. Okay. So then I get two g h, and that's my final velocity. Actually, it's plus or minus that, right? Because I don't know. If I'm taking the square root. It could be plus or minus. So I actually don't get the value of the the final velocity. I don't. I get the magnitude, but that's important to remember. And yes, I did this, a, you could say, I'm gonna just use that kinematic equation, boom. But I wanna do it just using the very fundamental ideas. So that's how fast it's going at the, at the bottom, okay? And G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, not negative, I already took into account the negative, and H is that height. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so now here I have my ball. I gotta draw the same picture again. So this is uh, V1 equals zero meters per second. V2, I don't know, that's H. Okay, so I'm gonna say work is F delta R cosine theta. And then work is a change in kinetic energy. 
So let's find the work. I know the force is mg. I know delta r is this way, in the same direction as the force. So the work is going to be mg h. Now what's the angle between delta r and f? That's this right here. So that's zero degrees. And the cosine of zero is, go ahead and put it in your calculator, but I'll tell you it's one. So the work is mgh. Yes, the work is positive. The work is mgh. Don't confuse that with something different. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Now that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy, k2 minus k1, but it starts from rest, so this is zero, because k equals one half mv squared. v is zero, k is zero. So now I get uh, mgh equals one half m v2 squared, mass is cancel, v2 equals the square root of 2gh. Ba, bam, ba, bam. It's the same thing, right? Okay, now, now the question is which way was easier? I, this is an opinion, right? I think this is easier um, because here's the deal. I, I don't, I didn't even care about the time. I didn't have to find the time because I don't care about the time. I wanted the final velocity. So if I'm looking for the final velocity, this is easier. What if I wanted to find out how long it fell? This would not be easier because I don't, I don't have the time. I'd have to find the final velocity and then use average velocity. I could do that. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to find the time, this would be, would be easier. So that's your first introduction to the work energy principle. So remember, it's work is F delta R cosine theta and work is the change in energy. And for now, we just have kinetic energy as our, as our energy. Now, let me tell you one of the things that's gonna, we're gonna talk about in the future, and that's the idea of picking your system. In this case, we picked the system of just the ball. Okay. But you could book, pick a different system and it would change how you do the problem, but not the final answer. Okay, so that's your introduction to work energy principle. It's going to be great. We're going to do a whole bunch of super awesome problems. I'm excited. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, share it with your friends. I need to get more subscribers so I can get up to a thousand. That's the magic number, a thousand subscribers. So we can do this together. Share this with your friends. Make your mother and your father and your grandmother subscribe because they'll like it too. Talk to you guys later.